For the past couple of weeks, I've been organizing this lab for a move to a new location. Uh, this particular lab is where I do all my board assembly work, and I have my, my pick and place machine over here. At the new lab, I'll have that new reflow oven, stencil printer, rework area, that type of thing. But what I also have in this location is cardboard boxes full of parts. And these parts, you know, typically come in an anti-static bag. This particular box is from LCSC. This is an order that came in last November. Uh, like this bag here is a quantity 30 of W5500, which is a WizNet Ethernet transceiver. And <clears throat> I have all my parts in a database as they come in, but I need to put them somewhere so that when I build a board that has that chip on it, I can pull up the bomb and say, I, we, where are these parts? So uh, the database also has a field where I have the location of the particular part or group of parts, either bag or collection, uh, where they are. So I have a four drawer cabinet over here. And what I ended up making was this thing here. This is a uh, eighth, inch, eighth inch thick hardboard that I got at Home Depot. And I used a laser cutter to cut this box out. So it's got these tabs. Everything is interlocking. I glued these all together. And these uh, boxes are designed specifically to fit in this cabinet. And they're also sized. There's 12 box. There's 12 individual uh, locations in this. I call these a tray. In this tray, there's 12. So it's labeled one through six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C. So that way I can have my location have just three lo three letters in it. And they're sized specifically to hold these, you know, I have a lot of stuff from DigiKey and DigiKey likes to use this size of bag for certain things. This is a five by seven inch bag and it will fit in, it'll fit in like this really easily. And it'll also hold these seven inch reels, which I have also a lot of these as well. And then I have a lot of parts on those little CDs that I used, that I repurposed for reels. So all that will fit in here. So when I build up a board, I call up the bomb and I say, where is the 5500? It's going to be in uh, my pick and place location T3C. So that would be in tray three, uh, space number C. And I'll be able to find that and pull that out and make those boards. For larger parts that come on rails, or larger reels, I've been using these particular uh, containers that I buy at my local Walmart. This is a Sterilite 1785. This is a really nice box. I've been buying them at my local Walmart for years, five to six years. And this particular storage box has a latching lid. So these things click up, hold on really well, and they don't come loose when you're moving them around. They're, you know, they're all interlocking, so they, they they made into each other. My local Walmart just recently uh, did a store reorg and they no longer carry this. So I buy these at walmart.com in boxes of six and this is a Sterilite 1785. So what I'm gonna do today is show you how I drew this up in um, Fusion and cut it out on a laser cutter and then glued it all together and then we will show you the final product when it's in one of these drawers over here. Okay, let's get started. I first found this at Thingiverse. This is a finger jointed tray for laser cutting and it is actually supplied for Fusion 360. So F3D, I downloaded that. And if we come over to Fusion and we look at this, um, this is what the tray looks like when you, you know, upload it and open the F3D file. And fortunately, the, uh, the creator of this uh, has, has this thing kind of completely parameterized. So if you bring up the parameters, you can change the, uh, the length, the width, the height, the thickness of the material, finger W, this is the optimal finger width. You can change all this stuff and he has the favorites up here, which is typically the things that you would want to end up changing. All right, so when you use a laser cutter like the one I'm going to use. I'll show you a picture of it here. This is a giant laser cutter. It's a dual head, 100, like 130 watt laser, and it's bad. It will take a um, three by five sheets. 
Uh, so, but over at Home Depot, I ended up buying these things here. This is a hard board. It's an eighth inch. It's four by eight sheets. And I have the Home Depot go ahead and cut it into, uh, make three cuts in it. So I get basically four two by four sheets out of this one hard board for eight dollars. Okay, so this is the thing we're going to use, and my friend who owns a laser cutter says this 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 cuts beautifully on the laser cutter. So we oh wait, let's uh, go back over to Fusion. So in order to do this, uh, you have to create a DXF file. That's the uh, file format that the laser software wants to open, and um, in Fusion you can only export DXF files from sketches. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a series of sketches. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new component. And we're going to name this component um, DXF. And then inside of here, we're going to be have this selected as our active component. We're going to create a new sketch. And we're going to create one on this plane. And what we're going to do is, is uh, project this geometry right onto this sketch. And from there, then you can kind of see that and we'll turn off the thing. So, so this is the, our, our sketch number one. We'll go ahead and close that out and we'll call this uh, front. Um, we'll name this front, front back. Because if you look at the, if you look at the, um, the box itself, the front and the back are the same, same uh, thing, same thing. So I have a front back. So if I want to export this, I come over here and I say export as DXF. And we're over in the, we have a temp directory here. And we'll say front back. All right. So I'll just rip through these and do it, do it pretty quick. So we'll be here on the left. We'll create, we'll come down here, make this the active component, create a sketch on this plane, do a project, project that over there, close that up, call this one left, right. Oops, that was front back, front back. Left, right. Okay, so, so you see where I'm going. So if you look at the, uh, the box itself, turn that off, turn this on. All right, so the front and the back are the same. All these dividers are the same component. And if you look at this, the, these are called vertical dividers. And here's the horizontal divider. I believe that's what it's called. Because if you look at the parameters, you have the number, you have L dividers, oh, uh, length dividers and, and uh, width dividers. So length dividers, I guess, are these, these three here. So there's three of these and it, you know, really basically, um, this is how you just set up the number of, of, of dividers. So if, if I wanted, um, you know, even number of things, I could just change the W dividers and what that's going to do is it's going to give me it's gonna, oh, it, it, sl it slots these for three. This is the same, this is the exact same part. It just puts three slots in here. All right, so I'm not gonna save this. This is the original file. So I came over here and this is my box itself. And what I ended up doing was doing the exact same thing. So if we look down here under profiles, under sketches, I have front, back, left, right, divider, and bottom. It's because the bottom looks like this. and the bottom, there's only one. All right, so from that, I did have to do a little fix up. Uh, the, uh, this divider box was never meant to be this tall. So what ends up happening, if I turn off the front here, um, where is the front? What is this one? This one is the front panel. Okay, so if I turn off the front, the uh, author doesn't of this didn't take into account that 
um, there needs to be another one of these tabs up here but that's fine because in my sketches I correct for that if we turn this off again we just come over back over to the profiles turn this guy off and look at the left right divider actually we gotta turn all this back on when I projected this sketch onto when I projected all the geometries onto this sketch I just went ahead and included this extra um, this extra profile which actually comes from the slot that gets cut out of the front and the back all right so when I was talking to uh, my friend Rob there um, he said you need we really should go in and try this thing called deep nest so if we come over to my browser here he said yeah go check out deep nest so what deep nest is is nesting software and what nesting software is is it optimizes the placement it rearranges things you can kind of see an example of it here it'll go through and rearrange all my parts and optimize the placement of the parts on the on the your stock such that you minimize the amount of waste that you have it's really pretty simple download the file install it you bring in all your DXF files then you um, select which one is the actual stock itself and then you hit start and it goes and finds all the different options for the nesting <coughs> so let's go into that so over here actually what I need to do is to go re-export all my my files because I've deleted that directory here and we first need to need to delete that one so this is my this is my my, my design so I'm just going to go export all these files so this is front back this is right left this divider bottom and you know, I'll need to count my need to get a count here no I don't all right so we'll come back over to deep nest I have it running here we'll say import we'll come over and this is the directory we'll just go ahead and import all these ones you have to import them all at, at once one at a time actually let's start let's start by defining our stock so this plus button down here lets you add an additional uh, outline to your set of files here so I'm going to go in and say I have a four foot wide two foot hall two feet oh, that's inches so four feet is uh, 48 and this is 24 everything is in inches here so we got 20 48 by, by 24 which is good and I'll go ahead and import my things here see now it's importing it and this came in as 26 by 15 16.5 now if when I first ran this it came in as uh, points so if you want to change that you come over to this nesting configuration and you change the import units to inches or millimeters or whatever it when it, it comes when it's installed it's it's defined as points so your parts come in at the wrong size but fortunately over here this tells you the actual size that it determined it to be which is correct so there's only one of these is the this is the bottom uh, here's the divider and the divider if we look at the divider we only have one divider and we'll import the front back and what we'll do is we need two of these per box so we'll click two there and the last one is these ones here so we've got one two three four five six seven we've got seven and those were the right left and we got seven of those then what you have to do is highlight this as my um, this is the stock and then you have to come down here and select 
which of your items you want to include in the nest. This is important. If it's not doing anything, you have to set it up like this. One is my sheet and all these things. Now it turns out that these parts with this amount of, with this count, will not fit on this sheet. But you can't come over here and say, I want to try it on two sheets. So you hit nest. And what it does is it brings up their nesting window. It, re it reads up, loads everything into the, um, the nesting software and it's going to start optimization runs. And so what it's doing is see this one here, 43 seconds, but it only placed 10 of 11. Okay. This nest over here, um, did 10 of 11. This one here did 11 of 11. This one only did 10. And this would just keep running until it places, until it does them all. And what you end up doing is you run this until you find a placement that you like. And I don't know why it is not working quite right. It's not finding my thing. But we'll talk a little bit about, about what's happening here. So the parameters, what it actually does is combine lines so that these things are butted right up against each other. And this, this line here is only cut once. So it, it, it really does optimize the, move, the, uh, the cuts themselves. So there's an 11-11. There's an 11-11. See, this one has, this is waste, and this is waste, and this whole thing over here is waste. But this 11-11 is, these are actually, you have this, this piece left over. So what you end up doing is you can look at the placement of the parts. So you want all of them. And um, you, you want to optimize this for the amount of, of, of waste. That's basically what you do. So you can let this run forever. It'll just keep finding more optimization. But So let's say I like this one. I can say export here. And I can export it as a DXF file. And I can put it over here. I'm going to call it two sheets. And if we go look at our file over here in the temp directory and DXF, these are my things here. And we need to rename this with DXF. And I think that I can import that back into Fusion if I wanted to. We'll go back and Go back over here and we'll import this and see if I can actually see what that looks like in Fusion itself. Now, when I did this before, it got stuck. And let's see if it finds us this time. Yeah, it got stuck right here for a really long time. But eventually I was able to open it and uh, it worked. So you take this file and you open this in the laser cutting software. Let's see if this is going to work here. Oh, it got completed. Oh, this is good. Close that up. Let's close that guy. We'll open this guy up. So this is uh, this is our DXF file. It looks just like what it did in Deep Nest. And what do, when you open this in the laser cutting software, you select these top ones. You say cut this part. You just load a sheet in, cut it. Grab these bottom ones, cut it. Set up all this, the speeds and the, the uh, laser power and that type of thing. It's pretty straightforward at this point. But it is optimized and you can kind of see that it did uh, actually place these things dr directly together to optimize these cuts. It's really quite uh, nifty. It's actually an excellent, um, excellent nesting software, and it is completely open source. It's free as in beer and free as in speech. You can run it on Windows, OS X, and Linux. So I'll take you over to uh, actually showing you the laser. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because that's ridiculously slow. We'll go ahead and cut those up, and then we'll move on to actually assembling the box.
I won't show you much of this laser cutting because it's pretty much like this for about four minutes. But I will do want to show you a couple things here so it, you can kind of see that it has optimized that cut between those two pieces and it's cutting out the tab for what looks like one of the backs. What's interesting about this is I asked Rob what was the curve of the laser when it's cutting at this power and he said it's about 50 mils. So what that enables you to do is you don't need to have any tolerance on your cut parts because you take 50 millimeters and you, you half that. So that's what the 25 mils is what you're cutting off of each of the pieces. So when you marry them together, they fit together really quite well. And doing this whole cut takes about four minutes. And this is one, so eight minutes for the entire box. So here's a really fast glue up. Uh, just used Elmer's school glue. And that these parts fit so f tight that you can kind of see that those uprights just stand straight up. These ends were hard, hard to get on because there's a little bit of a bow in them. Once you kind of get them together, they kind of stay together unless you bump them and then they'll all fall apart. But I found that if you clamp it in the center, you can work your way out. And it turns out that this particular box was pretty hard to get together. This was the only box that was. And I kind of used a mallet to tap the ends on, to tap the uh, tap the back, front and back on. And there's about 70 joints that need to get held together in order for this whole thing to work. And I was getting a little frustrated here because I knocked the end off. Of course, this is the one I film. The rest of them went together perfectly. This one was just trouble. But I used a band clamp that went around the entire thing and then I added some spacers in the middle to add some additional force where there wasn't a band. And I tapped it all down and it was done. Here's the box all glued together and I just tapped in the center divider. I left it free so I can pull it out. And if I need to, I can cut the divider and actually have some of these chambers be a little bit longer. Here's the box placed inside of a drawer and you can kind of see it's a really nice fit. And I can get it out. I left a little bit of space to get my fingers around the edge and pull the box out if I need to. And as you can see, I started doing some organizing already, looking through cardboard boxes, finding the entry in the database, updating its particular location. That's it for this project. Thanks for watching.